What's going on guys? It is the SMT with another video for you and what we're going to do with this video today is we're going to take a look at Dish Network and all of the agreement components from the merger that they currently have released information on. All of that information is coming directly from the horse's mouth, Charlie Ergen. It's the business plan. It's what they plan on executing when it comes to the network. And we're also going to take a look at the very, very end, the earnings report for quarter two for Dish as a TV provider. So first, actually what I'll do is I'll start with that part and then it explains everything and why they want to be a wireless carrier to begin with. So Dish's quarter two earnings go as follows. Uh, they had a decrease in satellite TV customers and they showed slow growth in the Sling TV. Those are the two major components of the business. So satellite TV lost 79,000 subs. Sling TV added 48,000 subs. So the additions are good, but there is a net loss of total subs at a negative 31,000. Quarter two of 2018, uh, or excuse me, quarter two of 2019, they had 151,000 net losses. Or no, I had that correctly. 18, 2018, 151,000 net losses, quarter two of 2018. And then 344,000 net losses last quarter. So that would be Q1 of 2019. Things have been awful for Dish Network. Clearly, you guys can see they had to make a move. Currently, they have 12 million pay TV subscribers. The breakdown is 9.5 million for Dish, 2.5 million for Sling TV. They were able to generate $3.2 billion in total revenue and uh, $3.4 billion for quarter of two of 2018. So year over year, their revenue has gone down. Their TV offerings are really not that good at this point. It's not really compelling for most customers. Satellite appears to be going, you know, the way of the dodo bird. A fourth carrier merger deal was pretty much their way out of a failing business, or at least you could say a, a struggling business. So I think it's, it's pretty much well indicated that they had to make a move and do something to stay viable as a company. So in transitioning towards this next piece, the Dish Network plans and outline. So the FCC has completed and reached an agreement on the terms for what Dish will have to do with their network. Uh, the first thing is Dish will have to have a core wireless network by June of 2022. 20% of the U.S. has to be covered with 5G in this component. Uh, the second part, Dish also has to have 70% of the U.S. covered with 5G by June of 2023. We actually already knew that. But add to this that they will have to have 15,000 5G sites up and running utilizing 30 megahertz of spectrum. That would be new. Uh, another part, download speeds have to be at least 35 megabits per second. Next, 50% of targets must be reached in order to receive a two-year extension. So this is interesting. It's almost like the FCC is saying, if you don't hit the targets, we're going to pull the plug on you guys. And there's going to be... Uh, some pretty severe fines. Uh, and the last thing there, Dish can't sell AWS 4 or 600 megahertz licenses for at least six years without DOJ or, or excuse me, DOJ and FCC consent. So you need both of those parties unless they sell Dish itself. So I think this kind of shows that Dish selling is a legitimate possibility. Even the FCC and the DOJ had to put that in there. Uh, in terms of a 5G goal, these are quotes from Charlie Ergen. They will have 5G cities by the end of 2020. Boost uh, needs to become more competitive, and they also want to get into postpaid. Uh, obviously, postpaid is a much more profitable segment, generates more revenue. And on the comment of 5G, Dish 5G will be standalone. It will not be the non-standalone variant like we see with the wireless providers currently. Standalone standards will be wrapped up by mid-year of next year and uh, will be set for 2020 uh, end-of-the-year launch. Now, money-wise, a lot of people were concerned about Dish poning up the money. They can pay the, the money for Boost and the prepaid, uh, so they do have the cash, the $1.4 billion there. But they did, Charlie Ergen did identify they will need more capital for the network build-out. I mean, clearly, they're going to need billions for that. And he also mentioned other companies getting involved, 
he did mention Amazon, Google becoming real possibilities. Uh, in terms of merger deal specifics, we do have the closure of everything. All Sprint prepaid components are involved. Sprint prepaid proper, Boost Mobile, and Virgin Mobile. Do now for those entities $1.4 billion. This does include 9.3 million customers. Some of that knew we already, uh, some of that we already knew, and I just wanted to highlight it. Uh, the second thing, and this is new, 14 megahertz of 800 megahertz spectrum nationwide. This is the band 26 from Sprint is going to cost them 3.6 billion. This is due in three years. We knew that part, but the amount of spectrum, the 14 megahertz, uh, we're just learning about all customers immediately move to dish once the merger is cleared uh, and makes it through the court proceedings from the state's attorneys general, 400 employees, 7,500 locations. And in terms of the network, seven-year MVNO deal on T-Mobile network, they also have merger uh, roaming agreements involved. So some new and some old stuff there. So, you know, clearly Dish was forced to make a move. Uh, you could see by the quarterly earnings, they were not doing well. They were not a viable business and things were trending down and now we have pretty much everything we need to know about what dish needs to accomplish over the course of the next three or four years to indicate and continue building out the network they've got their landmarks they've got their checkpoints they've got their goals and everything we expect to be seeing soon we should have more updates up and coming in the next six to eight months about what dish is doing and building out their network and how far along they're coming so make sure you keep it tuned to the channel. Make sure that you are subscribed. Ding that bell to be notified whenever I do upload new videos on everything that is going on in the wireless space, including now Dish. So thank you guys for watching. Uh, if you could, please like this video, share this video. If you would like to get more involved with the SMT communities, we have the Discord server, link in the description, as well as a link for the SMT Patreon page. Those are both there. And if you would like to support the SMT channel monetarily with a small or occasional donation, there's a PayPal link there as well. Thank you for those considerations. I think I'll leave it at that. Next up is Verizon earnings reports. So make sure you guys stay tuned. That video is up and coming. I'll make it available as soon as possible. Uh, I'm the SMT, and I will see you guys on the next video. Peace.